hello guys welcome back to our channel and welcome to today's video in today's video we'll be looking on the synthesis of purines which are adenine and guanine now let's start with the main pathway ribose 5-phosphate in the presence of diphosphokinase forms phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate which is called prpp glutamate and amino acid donates an amino group to PRPP and this forms 5-phosphoribosyl amine. This 5-phosphoribosyl amine undergoes a series of reactions including carboxylation, aspartate donating an amino group, and dehydration. This forms IMP, which is otherwise called ionosine monophosphate. IMP is used in both the synthesis of AMP and GMP. To produce GMP, IMP undergoes oxidation in the presence of IMP dehydrogenase. This forms xantholate, which is called XMP. Glutamine donates an amino group and uses ATP as an energy source to convert xantholate to guanylate in the presence of an amido transferase enzyme. IMP is also used in the synthesis of AMP. Aspartate donates an amino group while GTP is the energy source. This differs from the synthesis of GMP where glutamine was the amino source and ATP was the energy source. Adenylosucinate synthase converts IMP to adenylosucinate and through a lyase enzyme forms AMP. Now that we know the differences between AMP and GMP synthesis, let's look on the important things to note. Synthesis of PRPP is inhibited by ADP, GDP, pyrimidine, and histidine. If there is reduction in the synthesis of PRPP, this will also affect the synthesis of purines which it will cause it to be reduced. The committed step of the reaction is the formation of the 5-phosphoribosyl amine. If there are high levels of AMP, IMP and GMP, it will be inhibited. This acts as a protective factor preventing the overproduction of these molecules. If there is except sorry, if there is excess <laughs> AMP and GMP, these will inhibit their precursors, which are adenylosucinate and xantholate. If there is a high level of GTP, this can cause the production of AMP. And if there is high ATP, this can cause the production of GMP. Now let's look on another pathway called the salvage pathway. If a purine is degraded, it forms free bases and these free bases can be used to produce nucleosides. PRPP is the source of the ribose 5-phosphate and this reaction is irreversible. Hypoxanthine plus PRPP in the presence of HGPRT produce IMP. Guanine plus PRPP in the presence of the same enzyme forms GMP. Adenine plus PRPP requires a new enzyme called APT, and this forms AMP. Now let's focus our attention on how these purines are degraded. AMP loses a phosphate group to produce adenosine. And in the presence of ADA, or adenosine deaminase, it gets deaminated to form ionosine. Ionosine, in the presence of phosphorylase, produces hypoxanthine. This hypoxanthine is oxidized twice, first to produce xanthine and then to produce uric acid. This uric acid is excreted in our urine. Let's move on to GMP. 
So GMP is hydrolyzed first to produce guanosine, and this in the presence of phosphorylase is cleaved to produce guanine. Guanine loses an amino group in the presence of guanine deaminase to form xanthine. Xanthine is oxidized to form uric acid. Now let's look on some disease applications. Severe combined immunodeficiency or SCID affects the levels of lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are the site for major ADA activity. If there is ADA deficiency, this can cause a buildup of adenosine. Adenosine inhibits ribon ribonucleotide sorry, reductase, which inhibits DNTP formation. If there is no production of DNTPs, then DNA cannot be synthesized. For treatment, we can use bone marrow replacement therapy, which is to increase the levels of B and T lymphocytes, or we can use enzyme replacement therapy. With enzyme replacement therapy, ADA is given with polyethylene glycol, otherwise called PEG, and this increases the time it spends in the body. Next disease is called gout. Now, gout is an inflammation of the joints, usually when there is increase in uric acid in the blood or in the tissue. So to diagnose this, we usually use a polarized light microscope and we look for monosodium urate crystals, which are usually yellow to orange in your synovial fluid. Now for treatment, it includes nutritional treatment, reducing the consumption of liver or other organs, and also a drug called allopurinol. Now allopurinol, what it does is that it inhibits xanthine oxidase. Xanthine oxidase converts hypoxanthine to xanthine or xanthine to uric acid. If there's inhibition of xanthine oxidase, uric acid will be reduced or will not be produced. The last disease that we're going to look on today is Leishman syndrome. This is an X-linked recessive disease which causes a deficiency of HGPRT. HGPRT is used in the salvage pathway to convert PRPP to nucleosides. If there is a decrease in the HGPRT levels, this will cause an increase in PRPP. Increase in PRPP means that there is increase in the synthesis of purine by the de novo pathway. Increase in purine level will also cause an increase in uric acid due to degradation. For treatment, we use allopurinol, which is an inhibitor of xanthine oxidase. Xanthine oxidase converts hypoxanthine to xanthine or xanthine to uric acid. With this treatment, we will expect a decrease in the uric acid level. However, there will still be an increase in PRPP. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one. Take care.